Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today for another one of my videos. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know I love to talk about all things sewing related with a little bit of knitting sometimes sprinkled in too. And in today's vlog, I'm really looking forward to sharing with you some new fabrics I've got and some new patterns too. I bought a couple of patterns this last month. Plus, um, last month, January, was my birthday. So I got a few sewing goodies for my birthday. So I've got them to share. And I've got a few sewing plans for February. So it should be a bumper video full of new fabrics and patterns and sewing goodies and plans. So I hope you'll stay tuned to find out about all of those. But first of all, I thought I'd start the video as usual with what I'm wearing today. And today, actually, the weather's getting a bit milder here in the south of England. It's been really, really cold, but the sun has been shining this week and it's inspired me to get out a few more of my, I guess, transitional dresses. So I might be a bit optimistic today and it might go a bit cold later. I might need to put a cardigan on, but for now, I'm feeling comfy in this dress, quite a transitional dress, and I made it using this pattern here. It is the Davenport Dress Pattern by Friday Pattern Co. It's a really pretty dress pattern with some really lovely details. I've made two versions. This is my more wintry version. I made more of a spring version too. But I'll show you the line drawing so you can see what it looks like. It's designed for woven fabrics and it's got loads of lovely details. First of all, it's got this elasticated neckline here that kind of gathers in, which is quite a nifty feature because it means you don't have to have any fastening. So there are no buttons or zips required. So it's quite um, an easy sew in that respect. It's got a little yoke at the back and it turns into these little sort of shoulder yoke panels here with these really pretty little flutter details on the shoulders. Then it's got a drawstring waist that gathers it in. At the waist and creates quite like a blousy bodice effect. And it's got a gathered skirt with two tiers. It's got these little slanted pockets and it's got these sleeves that are designed to be fairly balloon sleeves with a little ruffle finish. So loads of really nice details on this one. There's a lot of gathering on this pattern. So I have said before, if you're not a big fan of gathering, this probably isn't the dress for you, but if you don't mind gathering, it's a really lovely dress to, wear, to sew and a really comfy dress to wear too. It also has a really inclusive size range. It goes from an extra small to a 7X and the largest size is for a bust of 60 inches. And for my version here, I made it in a viscose fabric that I got from Minerva quite a while ago. I think it might still be in stock. It was last time I looked. So if it is, I'll link it down below. And I bought it, it was really reasonably priced and I really like the kind of ditzy floral print on it. But I kept it in my stash for a while and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And then when the Davenport dress pattern came along, I thought it would be a really great fit. So I sewed it up and I'm really pleased I did. So my version, it's quite a busy print, so you can't see that well, but it's got little flutter shoulders. But I did make a few changes when I made this dress. Um, first of all, I found when I set up my first version and I used the length of the skirt per the pattern, it came up to sort of a midi length, so somewhere between my knee and my ankle. And I'm not that keen on that length on me. I prefer a slightly shorter skirt. So for this version, I shortened both um, tiers of the skirt just to make it into more of an above the knee length. And I prefer that on me. And then I also adjusted the sleeves. Um, I didn't, I'm not such a big fan of balloon sleeves. I find they end up wearing me a little bit. So I narrowed the sleeves quite a bit, took them into a sort of more, yes, sort of subtle sleeve shape. And then I just added on a simple elasticated um, channel cuff rather than the ruffle just because I thought it would be a little bit less frilly and a bit more understated so that's my version and um, it's really comfy and relaxed to wear um, I like how you can pull it in at the waist with a drawstring and um, it makes it really easy to adjust I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on but it's just a really nice comfy one it somehow feels a bit fancy I think because it's got the ruffles and it's in a black sort of base fabric but it's actually a really relaxed day dress to wear and I just wore it on the school run this morning with a pair of trainers and that was absolutely fine so that is what I'm wearing today but let me move on now to sharing with you a few new fabrics and patterns the first fabrics I've got to share with you I got last weekend I was hoping they would arrive soon this week so I could include them in this video so Minerva last weekend had a um, VIP Craft Club Members Day, which they have a couple of times a year. And they put um, everything on their website on sale with 20% off. So it's a great time, I think, to buy fabrics that you've been wanting for a while and maybe are a bit pricey and get a really good deal on them. So I got a couple of fabrics. And the first one I get might, might look a bit, the first one I got <laughs> might look a bit familiar because it's more of the same fabric that I got recently. And it's this really lovely fleece back sweatshirting fabric from Mind the Maker and this lovely lilac colour. I got some of the fleece back sweatshirting. I'll show you the back of it. It's really nice and cosy thick sweatshirt fabric. You can see it's all fleecy and lovely. So perfect for cold weather. And I got this um, because 
I made a couple of weeks ago this pattern here, the Mile End Sweatshirt by Closet Core Patterns. It's a pattern I got for Christmas. It's part of their Montreal collection, which also includes a pair of joggers, which is these joggers, they're plateau joggers. So I made the Mile End Sweatshirt in this lilac sweatshirting fabric and I really love it. It was a really enjoyable sew. I'll be talking more about that make in my January makes video, which I'll be putting out, I think, next week but I'll put a sneak peek of the jumper up just so you can see how it looks. I love how it turned out, I've already worn it, it's really nice to wear and I thought it'd be really fun to make a pair of matching jogging bottoms using my other new pattern that goes with the Mile End sweatshirt, the Plateau Joggers. So this is another pattern I got for Christmas. Um, I've got already got the True Bias Hudson Pants pattern so I'm quite interested to see how this one compares. It's a slightly higher waist pattern which I quite like because I do like a higher waist um, as well. And it's got a gathering at the waist and then you've got two different cuff options here, either an elasticated cuff or ribbing cuff. It's got pockets, you can add patch pockets on the back. I think it looks like it's maybe a slightly looser leg shape than the Hudson pants, which I think will work well for this fleece back fabric because it's not as the stretchiest fabric because it's a fleece back sweatshirt, it's not got loads of stretch. So you wouldn't want to probably make anything too tight. And when I made um, a pair of Hudson pants a while ago in a different colourway of this fabric. I did actually widen the leg a little bit so I did have enough stretch to bend my knees. Um, but I'm really looking forward to giving the plateau joggers a go in this fabric and having a little matching loungewear set. And I didn't need to buy too much of this because I already had some leftover from my Mile End sweatshirt and I also already had some leftover ribbing. I bought the matching ribbing for my Mile End sweatshirt in this lilac colour. So I just needed to buy a little bit extra of the fabric itself and I'm going to put that together with the fabric and the ribbing I already have and hopefully turn it into a pair of plateau joggers. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how they turn out. I thought I'd mention the sizing on the plateau joggers as well in case you're interested. It's got a really great size range. I've got the paper pattern which goes from a 0 to 20 but there's also a PDF version to download which takes it up to a size 32 I believe. So a really good size range on the plateau joggers. So hopefully I'll make those and I'll be able to let you know how I find the pattern compares to the Hudson Pants pattern, which has been my favourite joggers pattern for ages. So yeah, it'll be really nice to give a different one a go. <laughs> and while it was on special, I also got one more colourway of the Mind the Maker fleece back sweatshirt fabric because I really love this fabric and it's so nice to find a fleece back sweatshirt that's really thick and cosy and they're also where you can buy matching ribbing that's just the right colour. So I got one, one more colourway and I'd like to make with it another Mile End sweatshirt pretty much the same as my lilac colourway, or I might mix up it and go for a different variation. But the colourway I got was this really pretty sage green colour, which I think is really lovely. I think I'm really going for pastels at the moment on sweatshirts, so I'm, I'm being drawn to them. So I thought this green was a really pretty colour and not one I had a lot of in my wardrobe. And I got the matching ribbing too, I got half a metre of the matching ribbing. So I'm going to turn that into a mile end sweatshirt of some sort. I'll show you the pattern. Um, like the plateau joggers, it has a really great size range, so it goes up to a size 32. There are a few different variations. It's just quite a cool sweatshirt with some interesting details. So it's designed to be a little bit oversized and a little bit cropped. It's got a crew neck um, and it's got these really cool sleeve darts, which gives some really nice shaping to the sleeves and a really interesting shape. And it's also got these diagonal side seams, which lead to kind of really great style lines, just make it a bit interesting. And the back, it's got a yoke too. Yeah, some interesting details. You can top stitch and add some interesting top stitching too. There's also version B where you can add on a little channel at the bottom to make this sort of gathered um, piece at the front. And I've seen some really cool versions with that version. So for my first version, I went for this view A here, but I'm quite tempted to try out view B. I don't know whether I'll do that with my sage green fabric or at some point in the future. Um, I might just go for that version again, I'm not sure. And there's also this really cool um, hooded version with this uh, sort of um, crossover front and little kangaroo pouch on. So. I think it's a pattern you can make quite a few times with different variations and have quite a lot of fun with. But I think while the weather's still fairly cool, um, I'm going to make another one in this sage green colour. And it's one I definitely see myself wearing a lot, just quite a nice staple, but with a few interesting details. So it was nice to be able to get a bit more of this fabric while there was 20% off because it is on the pricey side. And I love that you can get the matching ribbing. So that is my second fabric I got from Minerva. I also purchased one more fabric when Minerva had their VIP um, craft club day at the weekend. And this is one I'd actually been admiring for a while, but I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go for it or not. And then when it was 20% off, I thought, well, that's a good time to give it a go. And this one is an Atelier Brunette fabric. And I really love Atelier Brunette fabrics. I always think they're such nice quality and so lovely to sew with and to wear. And this is actually one of their older collections. So it's not a newer one. It's one that's been around for a while and I had in mind a particular pattern I'd like to sew using this fabric. 
and it's a viscose crepe fabric and it's this one here it's part of their dune collection so it's a collection i think there are four colorways of this viscose crepe there's this black base one i've got here there's a chestnut colored one an off-white and a smoky colored one but I particularly have my eye on this black base when I do like a black base to a fabric. And I wasn't sure about it because I'm not that generally that much of a fan of a viscose crepe. I'm not a big fan of the texture of it, the sort of bumpy texture. I know a lot of people really like it, but it's not my favourite. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go and see what a Telly Brunette viscose crepe is like. And actually, I'm really pleasantly surprised. It's not got too much of a bumpy texture. It's quite smooth for a viscose crepe. And I really like the feel of it. So I'm glad I decided to go for it. And it's got... A really lovely drape to it too it's really really pretty i love the color and i had to look online as to what the sort of um, fabric pattern sort of represented i think it represents grasses blowing on the dunes along the mediterranean coast so i think it has a really lovely sort of sense of movement to it, the pattern yeah, it's really pretty so anyway i bought this fabric and i'm glad i treated myself to it with the sale and also i had a bit of birthday money so it's nice to be able to put that towards these lovely fabrics are on the pricey side and then a pattern I'd like to say with this, I've got somewhere here, it's hiding somewhere, here it is, is this pattern here, it is the Nina Lee Bloomsbury blouse. I got this pattern for Christmas and it's on my make nine list, my list of nine patterns I'd like to sew in 2022 and it's a pattern I've again, like the Atelier Brunette fabric, been admiring for a while and I just thought it was such a pretty one, I'd like to give it a try. So it's designed for woven fabric, so I think this crepe will work perfectly. It's a really pretty blouse pattern with a ruffle around the front. I think it goes all the way around the back, actually. Yeah, it does. You can see the line drawings here. It's got a button down back, this ruffle that goes all the way around, which you can make either in a sort of more subtle, smaller ruffle or a slightly more overstated ruffle. It's got a high neck with a ruffle on there too, and it's got bracelet sleeves with a little ruffle on the end. I just thought it was a really pretty blouse with some really nice details. And I thought it would look great with a pair of jeans just to make an outfit a little bit more fancy. And I thought it'd be a fun one to sew too. I really like Nina Lee instructions. I think the size range on this one, unfortunately, is not available in her extended size range. So it only goes up to a size 20. Um, but yeah, it's just a really pretty looking pattern. I love her pattern envelopes as well. This one, um, the Bloom Free Blouse, is based um, on the Bloomsbury area in London, which is an area I think that's got lots of literary connections. So it's got little books and ink wells or yeah, ink um, pots and quills on it. So yeah it's a really pretty pattern envelope so I'm really looking forward to giving that pattern a go in this viscose crepe fabric um yeah I don't know which ruffle I'm going to do yet I need to have a think about it I'm not sure when I'm going to get that sewn whether it'll be a February plan or a bit later in the year I'll see how I've got some of my other plans too I'd quite like to get on with my fleecy sweatshirting fabrics first and um, while the weather is still cold but I'm really pleased to have got hold of this fabric and it is lovely so I'm glad I did decide to give it a go so next up, I've got to share with you a couple of new patterns I purchased in the last month. And the first one I've got to share is one I'm really excited about. It's actually a magazine full of patterns and it is a Fibre Mood magazine. And it's Fibre Mood magazine number 16 and here it is. And I'm really looking forward to trying some patterns from this magazine. I've been admiring Fibre Mood patterns for a while on Instagram. Initially, I wasn't really sure about how it worked. But it became clear after a while that they sell their patterns, they kind of release them seasonally in magazines and so you get the magazine and it comes with a whole host of patterns in. And it's really lovely actually because it's almost like a sort of fashion magazine with lots of sort of inspirational shots of the different garments. So it's something you can really read and enjoy as well as enjoying sewing. And um, so I bought my version from the fold line and it's a bit of a funny story. I There was one particular pattern I really liked the look of in this magazine that I wanted to get. And I saw on the fold line website you could either get the individual pattern as a digital download and I think that cost around £8 or you could buy the magazine for £15.50 and I assumed that you'd buy the magazine as a digital download too so I decided on that option because there were a couple of patterns I liked the look of once I had a look at the different options available but when I went through to buy the magazine it added on postage and then there were no PDF downloads available at the end so I thought oh I've actually bought the physical magazine and I was quite pleased actually um, because I really love a paper copy of um, a pattern. I prefer it to a digital one and I thought £15.50 is really great value for the whole magazine. You get loads of patterns in here so it was a happy surprise that I purchased the actual physical copy rather than the PDF. So you get loads of patterns. I'll show you just a sort of picture which shows loads of the different patterns available. And the initial pattern that really grabbed me from this Fibre Mood magazine was this one here, which is the Ermine blouse. It's a really pretty sort of romantic style blouse. It's got quite a boxy shape. It's got this really pretty gathering detail at the front and then button placket and a round neck. And I really love that one. And I love the sort of inspirational shot that's included in the magazine. I'll see if I can find it so I can show you it. Here's a side shot of it. And it's really pretty blue fabric. 
I really like the look of that. But when I had a look at the magazine, there were a couple of other patterns that really grabbed me too. And I think the first pattern I'm going to make actually from this magazine isn't going to be the um, ermine blouse. It's another one that I think will be great for the transitional weather. And it's this one here. It's the Irma body warmer. So it's a really nice body warmer pattern. It's got a tie waist, these patch pockets. It's got this really cool quilted look and then a bias bound edge. And there's a really nice, again, inspirational kind of picture that I really love the look of that really made me think, wow, I'd like to try that. I'll see if I can find it. Here it is. It's this version, this sort of quilted yellow fabric. I really love that shot. And I thought that looked really cool, but something that'd be quite practical in my wardrobe too. I've got a body warmer already. This is a ready to wear one. It's quite a thick one. I think it's got some duck down in it. So it's really cozy, but I thought a lighter weight one would be great for transitional weather. So that's what I'm planning to make. So um, yeah, I really like the idea of making it with quilted fabric. So I got some sort of fabric that looks quilted and it's another Merchant and Mills cotton jacquard fabric. And if you saw my um, winter makes video or my vlogmas, you'll know that I made a Hovia jacket in Merchant and Mills cotton jacquard fabric, which I really love. It was such a nice fabric to work with. It's really pretty. And if you want to see more about my Hovia jacket, I'll link my winter makes video, which I put out, I think last weekend up above. So you can hear more about that one. But I really enjoyed sewing with that fabric, so I thought I'd love to make an Irma body warmer um, in that fabric. I thought that'd be something I'd wear a lot. And this make is a little bit inspired, actually, by a maker on Instagram called Alexis, who is my sweet sunshine. I'll link her Instagram account below. You may already follow her. She makes beautiful garments. And when Five Mood 16 came out, she made the Irma in a black Merchant and Mills cotton jacquard fabric. And it really inspired me. I thought it looked really lovely, but practical too. So I got some fabric, Merchant Mills Cotton Jacquard, and I'll link it below. And it's really pretty blue colour. It's called Ahoy, I think, the colourway. And this time, my first Merchant Mills make, I got the square print cotton jacquard, but this one's got this really pretty diamond print on. So it's a bit different. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use this and to make the Irma body warmer. So I'm really looking forward to that one. I've never made a body warmer before. I've never tried a five mood pattern before. I've had a little leaf through the magazine and the instructions do look on the sparse side, but I think it'll be okay because it should be a fairly straightforward make. So I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into that one and I'll hopefully be making that one sooner rather than later. That'll be one of my earlier February plans so that when the weather warms up a bit, I can get wearing that one straight away. So I'm really looking forward to giving the five mood patterns a try. And there are a couple of other really lovely ones in there. So I think I'll get quite a lot of use out of this book, as well as just enjoying leafing through it a little bit. So that's the first pattern I purchased. And then I purchased one more um, sewing pattern, which is another one of my Make 9 2022 plans. And it's the Estere Tea by French Navy. I'll just get the pattern out here. I got this one as a PDF pattern. I think it's only available to download as a PDF pattern, but I'll link it down below. I think I got it from Etsy. Um, it's a really nice relaxed t-shirt pattern. I really like the French Navy um, style. So I thought I'd like to try another one of the patterns. It's for stretch fabrics. I'll show you the line drawings here. If you watched my um, chatty vlog this week, I'll have shown this already and you'll know that my printer was running out of ink. So I had to trace over the line drawings so you can see them okay. So if the lines look a bit wobbly, it's my pen work rather than the pattern itself. It's a really nice and relaxed boxy shaped t-shirt. It's got a grown on sleeve and then these cool sleeve cuffs to the short sleeves or you can add on a longer sleeve. It's got a really nice split hem detail. You can add a patch pocket and it's got a little slightly scooped neck. And I just thought it'd be a really great relaxed t-shirt pattern to try. And so if you watch my chatty sewing video, which I'll link for this week, you'll know I've already made a wearable toile out for this um, t-shirt pattern using some fabric I already had in my stash. I had just enough to squeeze a t-shirt out of it. And it was a really enjoyable sew actually. So I'd like to go on and make another version. Again, I'm not sure whether I'll be doing this in February because it's a bit more of a summery make, so it might be one I leave a bit later, but I've got some fabric already. And it's another one of my fabric scraps because I've been trying to get through some of my fabric scraps and a couple of them I have quite large pieces in. So I'm hoping to just about be able to squeeze an austerity out of this fabric here, which is a really lovely art gallery cotton jersey fabric with this really cute ice cream print on. And I originally used this fabric to make a Kyolo wrap dress by Named Clothing. I made a short sleeve sort of knee length version for summer and I really love wearing that. It, makes, it always makes me think of being on holiday. But I think I have just enough of this fabric to be able to squeeze out a little um, Astaire tee. And I thought that would look really nice with jeans or shorts. So I think that'd be a fun make and really nice to be able to use the rest of this fabric. And I think this fabric is still in stock at Minerva. So I'll link it down below. It's such lovely soft cotton jersey. I think Art Gallery cotton jerseys are the loveliest, softest cotton jerseys. So I'm looking forward to making a proper version of that one. Now I've given it as go as a wearable toile. I think it'll be a really great go to t-shirt pattern that one.
So I've got one more pattern to share with you that I purchased this month before I move on to sharing some of the sewing goodies I got for my birthday. And this is a knitting pattern. And similar to how I've been trying recently to use up some of my fabric scraps, um, hence making the Astaire t-shirt out of leftover fabric, and I've been making some pants and all sorts of things to try and yeah, reduce my fabric scrap stash. I've also been trying to reduce my yarn stash too, because I have quite a few balls of yarn left over from projects. They're all sitting over here in the living room and I don't want them to get out of control. So I've been trying to reduce them and find projects to use them. And I've been just going through them and having a bit of an organise and a sort out. And when I was going through and having a sort out, I found I had a whole ball left of merry wool. And merry wool is a really yummy, squishy, lovely wool that I got from We Are Knitters. It's a merino yarn, it's quite chunky. And I've made a couple of hackney cardigans using merry wool. It's a really lovely cardigan pattern. I bought the kit and I made it in two different colourways, a mustard colourway and a blue colourway. And I can't find, the blue one is the one I've got the whole ball of wool for. And I don't know where I've put that. I must have put it somewhere <laughs> to keep it safe. But I've got a little um, bit of the mustard yarn left um, here that I found just a moment ago to show you. So you can see it's really lovely and squishy and soft. And this is all that I had left of the mustard yarn after I'd made my mustard colourway cardigan. But for my blue cardigan, when I made it, I think I'd cropped it slightly. I made it a slightly shorter cardigan. So I ended up with a whole ball left over. And I really wanted to be able to use it because it's such lovely wool. And then as if by magic, um, a We Are Knitters email came through into my inbox. And they had on there a few patterns you could buy on their website. And one of them was a hat pattern that required just one ball of the merry wool. So I thought that is absolutely perfect. I'd been thinking a hat might be a lovely way to go for it. I thought it'd be a lovely, soft, squishy hat. So I bought that pattern. I thought it was a really pretty hat pattern. And it's called the Briole Beanie. So I've got the pattern here, which is a digital download. I think it was £4 something. I couldn't actually find it available on the website anymore, but I'll link the um, Briole Be Beanie kit in case you fancy taking a look at it. So yeah, it just needs one ball of merry wool, but it's a really pretty hat pattern. I'll put a picture up so you can see. It's got this really cool twisted stitch that goes round. So I thought it'd be an interesting one to try. I think it might be an intermediate pattern. So might require a bit of thinking, which I quite like having a project every now and then to get my teeth into. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a go with my blue merry wool. Um, I've got another knitting project I've just started now. So I'm not sure whether I'll get this hat done in time for me to wear this winter. But I know it's kind of, it's going to be blue, it'll be classic, it'll be something I'll wear next winter anyway. So yeah, I'm quite excited about that one. And um, yeah, it'll be nice to have a knitted hat project. I've got a couple of knitted hats before and I really love wearing them. So yeah, I'm looking forward to giving that one a go. And it just came up at the right time, that pattern. Um, so that's my last pattern I've got to share. And then I've got a few birthday goodies to share with you. So I was really lucky for my birthday to get a few sewing goodies. And the first couple I've got to share with you are things I actually asked for. And the first one is one I'm quite excited about. It's a little tool for threading elastic. It's this little prim elastic threader. So it comes in three different sizes and you thread the elastic through this end and then you can use it to feed through the channels on dresses or jogging bottoms or pyjama bottoms, whatever you want to use it on. And I first saw this tool um, when I was watching Vlogmas. So I followed a couple of sewers on Vlogmas who were opening the Beyond the Pink Door advent calendar. And it was a really cool advent calendar full of lots of little nifty haberdashery items. And I thought this one and thought it was a great idea. So I've always used safety pins to feed through elastic through channels. And I find them a bit hit to miss. I've lost count of the number of times where the safety pin has come undone halfway through. And it's been really difficult to get it done up again, feeling through the fabric. And I've been worried about sort of piercing the fabric or damaging the fabric. And a couple of times I've even called on my husband for help. Where I've just got to the point where I just couldn't do it. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be great to have another alternative and I'm really looking forward to giving these a go. I don't think they'll fit every elastic because there's only the, the, the large one isn't, wouldn't maybe fit like, you know, really thick elastic. But I find it's the fiddly little elastic ones that are often the trickiest. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to giving it a go. I haven't got these tools out yet and given them a try, but I'm sure they will come in very useful. It's nice to have another little sewing gadget. The other thing I asked for was this one here. It is the Clover Hot Hemmer. I've seen this about for a while and I always thought it looked like quite a clever little um, gadget. You can use this under an iron, um, both like a dry iron or a steam iron. And you can use it to sort of turn up hems and get a really accurate um, hem turn up. So I thought that's really clever. And on smaller items too, when they're a bit fiddly, I thought it'd be really nice to have something to be able to turn it around. So I think that'd be really handy. I was actually the other day watching a hints and tips video for the Kelly Anorak. I purchased Lauren Guthrie's hints and tips video because she released the Kelly Anorak as one of their Guthrie Garney sewing society kits a while ago. And she always released a video to accompany the kit to kind of help you out through the sewing process. And I just bought the video rather than the kit because I thought it'd be quite useful for when I do come to sewing my Kelly Anorak, which I'd like to sew this year. 
Kellyanne Rack by Closet Core Patterns. And she was mentioning this tool and how she used it on the pockets of the Kellyanne Rack, so I thought, oh, excellent. That's already going to come in useful when I start that. So yeah, I think it'll be quite a handy little tool. Um, I'm quite looking forward to giving that one a go. So those are the two things I requested. For my birthday, I also got a Hobbycraft voucher. So I really enjoyed having a little browse on the Hobbycraft website and picking out a few crafty items. And I got a couple of knitted items actually, as well as one sewing item, which I'll mention. But the first knitted item I got was one ball of this really cute, sparkly double knit wool. So yeah, it's pink with a real sparkly um, thread running through it. It is a James C. Brett Twinkle Fashion DK. And I'd like to use this wool to make some fairy lights for my daughter's room. So I've made a couple of knitted fairy light sets recently. I made a Christmas set for us in the lounge. And then when I took the Christmas set down, I missed them. So I made a more neutral set that will work for the rest of the year. And I show those sets in my winter makes video, which I put out last week. And I'll link it down below in case you fancy checking them out. And when I put that video up, um, somebody commented and mentioned it would be really nice to make a set for my daughter's room in a pink and I thought that's a really great idea so thank you to whoever did mention that. So I got this wool and I think I'm going to give that a go. It's quite a nice um, quick simple project so it'll be great to just have on the back burner for when I want something I don't need to think too much about and I can just do in bits and bobs as I go along. There's no particular time frame. I haven't mentioned to my daughter I'm making them. It'll be a bit of a surprise so... I thought this will be quite cute. It obviously isn't helping me reduce my yarn stash down, but I thought, well, you can't go wrong with a ball of pink sparkly wool. It's definitely going to get used in this house. So I'll give those a go. And if my son um, decides he'd like some fairy lights too, I can always do a set for him. He'll probably go for like a Minecraft green set or something. So that might be quite fun too. So that was my first little purchase from Hobbycraft. And I also got this little nifty wool measuring gauge, which I thought was quite clever. So I'm kind of fairly new to making knitting gauges, but I am starting to do them more these days, particularly with making garments for myself, what if it's more important. This one's quite clever because it's got a 10 centimetre square. So once you've knitted up a little sort of swatch of wool, you can just put this on top and count the stitches and check you're kind of coming out at the right tension. I thought it was a really good idea actually, because I often try it with a ruler, but it's really hard to know that I've got the right number of stitches, but I thought if I can just plop that on the wool, it'd be a great way of checking. It's also got round the edge, and um, these knitting needle sizes so if any of the sizes rubbed off my knitting needles I can put them in and check which size they are which I thought was quite clever too. It wasn't very expensive um, and just quite a nifty little gadget. I also use my Hobbycraft money to get some buttons and I use those buttons to make a dress um, that I made a couple of weeks ago so they're already on the dress um, which I don't have here so I'll be showing those buttons and that dress in my January makes video or you might have seen a sneak peek of those buttons in my one of my chatty midweek videos. I can't remember which one, but if I can find out which one, I'll link it in case you fancy seeing those buttons. I got my Hobbycraft voucher too. Then I also got something I'd asked for for Christmas and then I arrived for my birthday. So I was quite excited about it, which is a really big sewing mug. And I'm going to use this mug, actually I'm already using this mug, to put in all my little scraps of thread and teeny scraps of fabric as I'm sewing. It's almost like a sewing bin that I have on the table. And I was inspired by Serena Sews, um, who's Serena who won the Great British Sewing Bee. I'll link her Instagram down below too. She said she always used a mug for her scraps and I thought it was a great idea. And I started using one of our mugs in the kitchen. I found it so handy and I really did actually put all the scraps in there. So there were a lot less threads on the floor. So I thought it would be nice to have a sewing themed one. So my husband found this one. It's really large, so perfect for storing lots of scraps. It's got lots of cute little sewing um, pictures on it. So I'm really pleased with that. I think it came from, it says, what does it say? Um, Eeksy Peeksy. So in case you're interested, because it's quite hard to find, he said, it's quite hard to find big mugs. Um, and I really wanted quite a nice sturdy big one for my little sewing bin. So I'm really pleased with that. And I also got a knitting kit for my birthday, which I was really pleased to get. This is one I asked for usually before Christmas, because my birthday and Christmas are quite close together. My family asked me to write a list of things I might like, and then they can just pick off there if there's anything they want to buy. And this knitting kit was on that list. So I was yeah, looking forward to getting it. I was hoping my mum might buy me that because she often buys me a knitting kit. And this knitting kit is by Wool and the Gang, and it is the Coco Sailor Sweater. It's a really nice slouchy, relaxed fit, sort of drop shoulder jumper pattern. And what I really like about it is it's knitted using the Wool and the Gang shiny, happy cotton yarn. And I find cotton yarn's really good on my skin. I find a lot of um, wool that's kind of actual sort of real wool, I guess, um, can itch my skin. But cotton yarn is lovely and soft and perfect for me to wear. So yeah, I was really excited to get that one. And the colourway I asked for was to make a red jumper. So it's this colour here, it's True Blood Red, which I think is a really pretty deep red. There's also, I think, a lipstick red, which is a lot brighter, almost like a pillar box, orangier red colour. But I really wanted this deep, rich red, and I'm really happy with the colour. 
I've also got white to go with it but I haven't got the white ball here because I've started knitting this one I couldn't wait to get started on that and the white ball is currently in use but you can imagine it's just pretty much the same colour as this tag here so it's going to be a red sweater with white stripes using the Coco Sailor pattern so it knits up on really large needles eight um, millimetre needles and the thread is quite fine so it's quite a loose knit so I think it should knit up fairly quickly and I'm really looking forward to having that one I think it'll be a great sweater to wear maybe for the summer because it's quite a loose weave so yeah, I'm really looking forward to yeah getting um really stuck into that. And I've just started it, so that'll be a nice project. And then I've got another knitted item to share with you that I got for my birthday. But this one, instead of being something for me to knit, is something that was knitted for me, which is quite nice. Um, so I received two hand knitted garments. I guess they are. And they're for my mum. She's a big knitter. She made me some slipper socks, and they're really cute. Um, actually, she made me one pair in this pink sparkly wool. And one pair in this purple sparkly wool so I really love the sparkles and they're just perfect for popping on if it's cold around the house over tights or over my socks and jeans but they're really cute they're knitted they've got a little ribbing stitch at the top I think they're knitted in a chunky yarn they feel really cozy then they've got a stocking stitch down the front and then the bottom it's garter stitch which makes them extra squishy under the soles of your feet so yeah they're really nice um I'll put a picture up of me wearing a pair so you can see how they look on my feet they fit really well they're really neat on my feet I think it was just really nice to receive something handmade. I love making handmade presents for other people and it's really lovely to receive something handmade too. So yeah, I think they're really cute colours as well. My mum does quite a lot of knitting. Um, when my son was younger, she knitted him quite a lot of jumpers and cardigans when he was little. And he's now maybe grown out of the knitted um, wear a little bit. My daughter still loves wearing my mum's hand-knitted cardigans and I know my niece does too. So they get quite a lot of knitted things from my mum, so it's nice for me to get something knitted too. I think they're really cute in these sparkly colours, so. And I've never knitted socks myself, so it's not something I've got anyway, so it was nice to have them. They keep my feet nice and toasty around the house. So yeah, that was a nice unexpected present. And then I also got one other item, which isn't actually sewing or knitting related. It's a crafty um, set that I got from a couple of my friends for my birthday, which is really nice. I wasn't expecting it. So it's this little set here. It is a um, felt craft set to make a little wreath with some pretty flowers on it. and they're quite pretty the colours of these flowers they'll go really well I think in my living room once I've done this wreath so I haven't ever done much felt making at all before but I think everything you need is in the kit it's by the Crafty Kit Co so I'm really looking forward to giving that one a go um, it's just nice to have something new to try I guess so yeah it just says you just need to add scissors and glue as well as the kit so I've got those I've got a glue gun and everything so yeah I'm really looking forward to giving that one a go something a bit different um, I don't know where they got it from actually um, but if I can find out I'll link it down below <laughs> So that I think is everything. I guess that's quite a lot really with all the fabric and patterns of my birthday goodies. It's been a good month in January and I've got some nice sewing plans for February which I'm looking forward to getting stuck into. So thank you so much for listening to me chat a little bit about what I've got planned and what I've been buying. It was really nice to share it with you guys and if you've enjoyed this video I would love it if you would give a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel and you enjoy hearing about my sewing and knitting content, I would love it if you'd consider to subscribe. And also if you press the bell notification, that means you'll get notified when my future vlogs come out. I generally do a midweek sewing chat video where I talk a little bit about projects I'm working on. It's quite a chatty video. And then I try to do one on the weekend on a Saturday morning too, um, like a sewing plans video or a makes video or something along those lines. So thank you so much for tuning in again. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you again soon. Bye.